Hello, my name is Captain Mike Taylor and I am a stay-at-home docent from the New Bedford Whaling Museum. Here is my choice of my favourite item. It is the Grinnell Resolute Desk, which can be found in the museum's Breitmeier Family Gallery. An expedition under the command of Sir John Franklin on board the HMS Erebus and HMS Terror, both converted mortar vessels, were sent to locate a northwest passage across the top of Canada. This in order to find a shorter route to the Far East. By doing so, the voyage rounding the Horn or the Cape of Good Hope will be shortened by many months. Many overland, including an early one by Franklin, as well as seagoing voyages since the 16th century had been unsuccessful. Franklin and both crews were never heard of again. Many expeditions tackled both from the eastern and western approaches to the passage were made to discover the fate of these men, including one with four vessels, which included HMS Resolute. She was a former bark named Ptarmigan that had been commissioned by the Royal Navy and renamed HMS Resolute. The expedition found remains of Franklin's first winter camp, and on her return to England, it sparked hope that survivors might still be found. A second voyage, again involving HMS Resolute, along with four other vessels under the command of Sir Edward Belcher, was dispatched. The Resolute became trapped in ice and she was abandoned. However, all the crews got safely back home. Henry Grinnell, born in 1799 in New Bedford, was a prominent merchant, a Massachusetts politician, and a financier. He was part owner, along with his brother, of a shipping line. And upon his retirement, developed a serious interest in the Franklin expedition. He was in close contact with Lady Jane Franklin and funded two voyages to the polar region to look for her husband without success. The whaling vessel, the George Henry, made a voyage, partly financed by Henry Grinnell, and under the command of Captain Buddington. She left from New London, Connecticut on a whaling trip to the Greenland area. By all accounts, it was a bad trip with poor weather and ice and Captain Buddington decided to return. On the passage back, they came across a seemingly abandoned vessel named the Resolute, and decided that after examination to return it back to Connecticut as a salvage prize. Its return was quickly noted by the British representative in New York, and he demanded the return of Her Majesty's vessel. The United States and Great Britain at this time were arguing over territorial and fishing rights and relations were not good. Henry Guerinel, most certainly because of his shipping interests in it with England, wanted to appease the failed whaling voyage investors as well as pleasing the British. He took it upon himself to discuss the matter with the White House. 
A sum of money was agreed upon by Congress and was duly paid to the investors who then released the Resolute. She was sailed to New York under the United States Navy Command and was made seaworthy and sailed to England. The vessel duly arrived in Plymouth and was later towed to Cowes where she was met by Queen Victoria who was overjoyed at her return. The Resolute never returned to service as a warship but instead served her time as a supply vessel. Getting unseaworthy, the Navy decided to break her up at Chatham Navy Yard on the River Thames. That's the approaches to London. Queen Victoria had a plan and instructed that some of the vessel's timbers be saved. She was going to have her master carpenters construct desks from the saved wood. Three are known to exist but as believe a fourth may also have been made. One, she sent to President Hayes at the White House, which is now used by the majority of the presidents of the United States, being the most popular. The second, in order of size, was presented to Mrs. Grinnell. Her husband had died and this is the desk we have in the museum. The third of the existing desks, the Queen had her made for her steam yacht. And this is the one I'm going to finish my story with. Trying to trace this third desk started with Wikipedia, which advised it was to be found in Portsmouth as part of the Royal Naval Centennial. After email and phone conversations with the UK, I found that the third desk had not been on display for a number of years and was now in storage with the Queen's collection at Kensington Palace. This was getting a little difficult, but I managed to contact a friendly person attached to the United Kingdom government. To ensure that this is what I was looking for, they sent photographs, which showed a small desk in a very large dark cellar. Not really knowing, I told them yes, and secured an appointment which involved security checks with Scotland Yard. In March 2018, I went to London and presented myself at the palace and with more fingerprints and photographs, I awaited my minder for, for the entry. Kensington Palace is home to members of the Royal and no public are allowed any place near. That's except, there is an exception. You can get into the front part of the palace, but that's it. Inside, we climbed a beautiful stone staircase where I asked my lady minder why we're going upstairs and not to the dark cellar you showed me on the photographs. Well, she said, you must be very important. As Prince Harry has had it brought to his office for you. And you are the only other person to have seen this desk here since President Obama. The desk is the smallest of the three, and I'm not sure which was the greatest thrill, seeing it or being in the Prince's own office. A problem, however, has now arisen. Our Saturday docent companion, Diane Sullivan, has been with two of the Resolute desks also. She has sat at the White House desk. Now the challenge has become as to who is going to be the first of us to be in touch with all three desks. However, first, she's going to have to get permission from the Queen 
Great Britain. And I, from the President of the United States, no easy task. I do believe if one of us can achieve this, they would be the first anywhere to have had this privilege, possibly since Queen Victoria and her master carpenter. Should you ever wish to hear the full story from us, you might like to come on a Saturday, when we're open at the museum, of course, and my companion and I will tell you the full tale of this natural historical item.